All right, so for this design tip, I want to show you how to create this, which is this nice spiral triangle design. All we'll do is just rotate and scale triangles within triangles, and then changing the stroke weight of the triangles will alter how this overlap is drawn. So we can change the overlap to produce some interesting swirling patterns within the triangle as well. And then if you expand the triangles and apply a stroke and a fill, you can produce some interesting results as well. So we'll talk about all those after we create our first triangle. So I'll go to my polygon tool. For this demonstration, I'll make the radius 50, and of course the sides will be 3. And in the newest version of Illustrator, there is a bevel tool for the corners, which can be interesting. I haven't played with it much yet. As well as there's a center for the triangle or any polygon you use, which is nice. So. I'll press L to activate my ellipse tool and hovering over the center I'll hold shift and option to draw out a nice circle guide so we can make our rotations nice and perfect. So selecting the circle and triangle go ahead and hold command and press C and then F to copy and paste in place and then scale it down to 89 percent and rotate it 3.75 degrees and you can continue this process as many times as you'd like in my example I repeated the triangle 16 times to produce this result so some quick tips on how to make that process a little faster is definitely have hotkeys for your transforms. So if you go to, for instance, object transform, usually there aren't any hotkeys assigned for rotate, reflect, and scale. So I created my own by going to edit, then going down to keyboard shortcuts, Going to menu commands, go to object, transform, and then input whatever hotkeys feel right for you for rotate, reflect, and scale. It's very useful, makes transforming very quick and easy. So for me, I just use option command V for my scale, and again, each triangle will be scaled 89% and then option command Z is my rotate and the rotation again is 3.75 degrees and from there you can hold command and press CF and then D and that will transform your triangle again with the last transform option you use so my last transform option was rotate. So now all I have to do is scale it. And you can continue repeating the process and it will make it a little bit faster. So once you have as many triangles as you'd like, if you'd like this pattern again, all you have to do is duplicate your triangle 16 times Then we can take this triangle, and copy it, and we can change the stroke. If we wanted to change the stroke to something thicker, we can go thicker, or we can go thinner. It just depends on what effects you would like to achieve. So if you'd like to play with the fill and stroke, 
go to expand in the object drop down and then from there just add a stroke so go up here and I'll add white to my stroke and I'll bring that stroke down to 0.5 and go to my stroke panel and select align stroke to outside so that can create a nice effect and you can change that effect to one that looks like this by changing the arrangement of the triangles so if you arrange the largest triangle to be on top and every subsequent triangle to be below it you'll create this staircase going inward if your smallest triangle is on top and your largest on the bottom then you'll produce this effect also you can play with the stroke weight again by just going in and selecting each triangle individually and altering its stroke weight so for this effect I just made my largest triangle two points and the stroke of my smallest triangle is 0.4 so I just incrementally step down 0.1 for each triangle and that will produce this overlapping swirl effect if you want to have the overlapping swirl effect join the other side then when you incrementally step down and get to the stroke weight of 1.2 the following triangle will be 1.15 and the triangle after that 1.1 and it will decrease in stroke weight by a value of 0 0.05 and that will give you this sort of spiral instead of this spiral now there's some problems that I've noticed in the newest version of Illustrator and that comes along with working with fills and strokes so if I copy this and I paste it here and then I expand our triangles you'll see the stroke as well as the fill and they're both expanded and in the older versions all I would have to do is go down to my pathfinder and choose merge but watch what happens when I use it once I click merge my triangles are set out of alignment so again you can see how if I toggle back and forth you can see the triangles shifting out of place so it doesn't produce the exact desired result in this newest version of Illustrator but a way you can get around that and at least subtract the white so you only have the black is you select your shape press K for the paint bucket so live paint option and then just tap in the black to activate live paint and then go ahead and expand it what that does is it actually uses the I guess the right algorithm to perform the divide pathfinder function so now you can go in and you can select just the black by going to select same fill color and then you can command X to just cut that out or 
you can go to select, inverse, and then delete the white. So now all the negative space is gone and you just have the black. And it is perfect. You won't have to hand design every single edge. So that's my one quick tip on how to hopefully help you work around that problem. So if we just do a little test to see how that looks, if we go and make these colors here, you can see that even though it's not perfect and it's not all joined together, at least you have the design without the white. So you eliminate the negative space. So hopefully that will help you solve some of the issues with the newest version. There's other issues with alignment as well that you might want to pay attention to. For instance, this line, I tried to align to the center of this circle and it looks like it's aligned from far away but up close if you zoom in you can see that this anchor point or this center of the circle is not aligned to the path and every time I tap it gets closer but it's not exactly completely aligned with the path so you may have to go ahead and press horizontal align center multiple times until it's as close to the center as you can possibly determine based off of the zoom. If you're using an older version of Illustrator and you don't have that nice handy center function for a triangle, you can go ahead and just take a line You can Command C and F to copy and paste in place and then rotate it 120 degrees. And then you can just hold Command and press CFD to duplicate it again. Now you have this nice hexagonal line arrangement. And then drawing out a path and aligning the points to the endpoints of each line will produce a triangle. However, in the newest version, if you attempt to do that, you'll run into another problem, which is the snapping function is off. So if I show you up close, when I tried to snap that last anchor point, it did not align or snap to the anchor point on this line. And the first two attempts were successful. If we look here, that's snapped, as well as this one is snapped. But the moment I move forward and try to snap that last endpoint, you can see that it does not remain aligned for that final snapping. So this anchor point moved as well as the other anchor point moved. So I have no idea what happened to the algorithms that they use to give you that snapping feature but it's completely off and there's no way I haven't found a way to get around that problem yet so definitely be mindful of that if you're using the newest version the snapping features don't always work very well as well as the Pathfinder has its own issues so hopefully you found found this tutorial useful and if you have any questions feel free to comment in the comments below thank you very much for watching
And if you want some really useful tips on how to use auto-generated corner tiles, or if you don't even know what those are, definitely check out my video, Pattern Variations in Seconds. I'll post a link in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.